Hi everyone, uh, Dr. Hammett here. I just wanted to try something out here. Um, there's a number of things that I feel like I want to talk about in class that frankly we just don't have time to get to. And there's one topic in particular related to recurrence relations, generating functions, that I think would really benefit you to think about a little bit more. We talked a fair amount about the Towers of Hanoi, um, a couple of other recurrence relations, and we even solved the Fibonacci recurrence. Um, the Fibonacci numbers are extremely important. They come up in a variety of contexts, but there's actually a particular sequence that comes up even more often than the Fibonacci sequence, and that's called the Catalan numbers. So uh, I just wanted to take some time to talk about that a little bit. Now here's the thing, um, I don't really know what I'm doing with this video stuff, so uh, in essence this is just going to be a grand experiment. It might fail miserably, uh, but we'll see here. Um, basically I'm going to work through um, the Catalan numbers. I'm going to give you a situation in which they arise naturally, and, and then we're actually going to solve the recurrence relation that we come up with uh, for the Catalan numbers by using generating functions, of course, right? Uh, you probably aren't very surprised by that, okay? And so I'm going to do a lot of weird stuff like flipping the computer around. Um, and if you want to follow along in your textbook, uh, there's a couple of places where the Catalan numbers show up, but the main uh, place where the recurrence relation is solved is on page 312 and 313 in your textbook. Um, so that's kind of the baseline point at which uh, that recurrence is solved. But right now I'm just going to start working through it, introduce it, and just kind of work through it. So um, I'm gonna, you're going to see me writing on a piece of paper. Uh, hopefully, um, hopefully this will work out all right. Okay. So just hang with me. All right. Here we go. All right, so first of all, where do the Catalan numbers actually come up naturally in context? Well, um, that's kind of a tricky question because the, I could do this in dozens of different ways, but probably the most natural place it comes up in context is when you ask the question, how many ways are there to multiply some number of numbers together? So for instance, uh, if I just had one number, okay, so like n equal to 1, uh, how many ways are there to uh, multiply those numbers together? Well, obviously, the answer is, is 1, right? So, um, you know, I just have one number, and I mean, uh, um, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, you're done, right? So that means that C1 is 1. C1 is, uh, so Cn is going to be the number of ways to multiply n numbers together. Well, what if, what if n is equal to 2? Um, well, um, let's think about it. If you have two numbers, k1 and k2, uh, how many ways are there to multiply those numbers together? Well, uh, it's still 1. <laughs> So C2 is also 1, okay? Uh, what if I have three numbers? Now it starts to get a little bit interesting. So I have K1, K2, K3. And, and we're trying to figure out, all right, how many ways are there to multiply these numbers together? Uh, well, <laughs> you can either group the first two numbers together and do that product first and then multiply the result by K3, or you can do, uh, you can group the second two numbers together and multiply by the first and there, uh, and, and do the product that way. So that means that C3 is actually 2. Oh, all right, now we're we're starting to get somewhere here, and then okay, so let's go to let's go to n equal to four, okay, and we say to ourselves, all right, 
Uh, all right, now I have four numbers, okay? So K1, K2, K3, K4. All right, all right. So how many ways are there to group these numbers together? Sometimes people might say parenthesize these numbers together uh, so that I can actually multiply this out. Well, um, well, what do you think? Uh, uh, you know, well, what you could do is you could say, hmm, well, maybe what I do is I, I take K1 and, and then I, you know, I kind of put K2 inside some parentheses. And maybe the first thing I do is basically multiply K3 and K4 together, and then multiply by K2, and then multiply that result by K1. All right, so that, that would be basically like one way to pull that off. Uh, hmm. Let's see, what else could we do? Well, um, well, maybe I could like group K1 and K2 together and like multiply those and multiply that result by what happens if I group K3 and K4 together. Yeah, that's another strategy. And and then and then what? Well, you know, I could also I could also basically kind of leave K4, uh, you know, dangling off the end here, and you know, figure out what happens with the rest of these things. So maybe inside of these parentheses, I could do K1, and then do K2, K3, like this. Okay, but then you, you kind of stare at this for a minute and you say, oh man, so K4 is here and I have these three things in here. I grouped K2 and K3 with K1 out here, but I also could have like moved the parentheses around the first two things. And then you realize up here, we could have, we could have done a similar thing, yeah? So essentially, I could have left K1 up here outside of the parentheses, but I could have grouped K2 and K3 together and then followed that up with, with K4. And similarly down here, I can do, I can say, all right, K1 and K2, you go first, and then we'll multiply that by K3, and then, and then K4 will come along at the end. All right, so in that way, we get two ways to, to pull this product off here, and then this one, and then two more ways. So that tells us that C4 is equal to five. Okay, so what do we have here so far? Uh, C4 is five. We have up here, we have C3 is two. We have C2 is one. And we have C1 is one. Hmm, all right. Uh, what is going on here? Um, um, is there some kind of general pattern that is emerging here? Um, well, yeah. The answer is yes. Uh, and you can kind of see it up here in, in n equal to 4. Essentially what happened was uh, we essentially said, all right, what if I kind of leave the first element off by itself? Then the number of ways I can do this product is basically reduced to a problem of size n minus 1 inside of these parentheses, see? So there's three things I need to multiply together, and basically I used everything from the case n equal to 3 to, to kind of uh, figure out the number of ways to group things in the last n minus 1 terms. And do you see that the same thing happened here? Uh, I basically had the last term off by itself, and I used basically the, the case n equal to 3 to group things as uh, among the first three elements in the product. And of course, I also used the n equal to 2 case right here. See this? There's the, I grouped the first two things together, and then I said, okay, what happens with the last two things? Uh, of course, you know, we grouped, grouped them together. Do you see what's happening? So essentially what we have here is like C4 is equal to C1 times C3, because look, I had 
one thing and then three things, you know, plus C2 times C2 plus, plus what? C3 times C1, right? So the number of ways to group three things times the number of ways to group one thing. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so does that does that work out? Let's let's check it out here for a minute. All right. So uh, is C4 equal to what I got for C1, which was one times times C3, which was two, plus C2 times C2, which is one times one, plus C3 times C1. So C3 was two, right? So plus two times one. Hey, it's five. Exactly. Uh, exactly what we th uh, think it should be. And what about C3? Well, by the same token, I mean, you can kind of see what happened up here. Look, look up here at C3, okay? So at C3, uh, I had one thing off by itself, and then I grouped here, and I basically uh, reduced the problem to the n equal 2 case. And here I had the n equal 2 case separated off, uh, and then I had the n equal to 1 case sitting right here. Do you see that? So in essence, what's going on is C3 is equal to C1 times C2 plus C2 times C1, or at least it should be. Does that work out? Let's see. 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1. Yes. It's 2. Ah. Okay. So what we have here basically is we have initial conditions... Um, let's see, what are the initial conditions here? Uh, C1 equals C2 equals 1. And what is the recurrence relation? Okay, the recurrence relation is what? Well, I think it's that Cn should be equal to, okay, so think about it. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to, uh, pick out the first element in the product of n things, okay, right? And then you're going to have n minus 1 things at the end. So it's, so the number, so it's C1 times Cn minus 1. Now, or you could take the first element with the second element and group those off by themselves. Okay, there's C2 ways to multiply those together. And then and then uh, you have to count the number of ways to group the last n minus two things. Plus, do you see, okay, do you see the pattern here? It's going to be uh, grouping off the first three things, the number of ways to do that, times the number of ways to, um, you know, uh, multiply out the last n minus three things, plus dot, 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 okay, all the way down to c n minus one times c one. So that's the that's the case where the last thing is kind of off by itself. Know what I mean? All right. So there is the recurrence relation, and of course, this recurrence relation holds for n equal to or greater than uh, like three. Okay. All right. Look at that. Amazing. So there's the recurrence relation. I mean, think about this for a minute. <clears throat> that recurrence relation looks uh, obnoxiously complicated. I mean, it's fairly simple to explain why uh, it is what it is, given the situation. But look at it. How would you solve that thing? We just did a whole bunch of, um, a whole bunch of things with linear recurrence relations, where you had constants multiplied by previous terms, but here all the terms are like multiplied together. It's highly nonlinear. Um, no technique that we have is really able to handle this at present, okay? And like I said, the way that we are going to be able to handle it is going to involve generating functions, okay? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right now. And, uh, and we'll, we'll see how to solve this recurrence relation, okay? I don't want these videos to be any longer than about 15 minutes. All right, more to come.